Hi YouTube. Right, so this is the Azimuth Elevation Rotator and okay so it's looking a bit tired, could do with a clean up and there's the rotator control. Um, at the moment this is not fantastically calibrated even though it does tally up pretty well here um, it's not brilliantly calibrated. I'm just going to quickly take you through the calibration routine very very quickly so what we do is we look at our calibration, we enter a C on the keyboard in Arduino COM4 and C will give us a readout on the K3NG rotator. So it says we're 120, 90, which tallies up with this screen, 120, 90. We're not too far off 120, 90 anyway, but we want it more accurate than that. So what we do is we send an O command, press enter, and we get this. Rotate fully counterclockwise, then send the keystroke. At the moment, where this rotator position is, we're getting about 0.9 volts from the feedback circuit inside this rotator housing. We're going to be working on the azimuth first, which is just O. So if we look here, we go all the way to counterclockwise. Oops, we can get a bit of focus on that. Focus on that. See the voltage is climbing. Rotator, rotator going around. You won't get to see this screen changing while you're calibrating. So don't worry about that for now. The screen hasn't frozen. You just won't see it working while you're calibrating. So there we are. Voltage right. still climbing. So we get round to about four and a bit volts, about 4.3 volts, I think it is. And there we are, the mechanical limiter switch says we're at 4.2 volts, 180 degrees counterclockwise. So now we send an enter stroke on the keyboard and that says rope to memory. Right, now we want to calibrate the opposite direction. So now we send a big capital F, press enter, and then we get this rotate to full CW and send keystroke. So that's exactly what we can do. As we see, if we can see, we can get both in the same shot. Oh, by the way, this is my uh, this is a a dumpster find, as uh, as it's been called on the internet. Someone gave this laptop to me, so uh, it's got a few battle wounds. Works pretty well, though. There we are. That's it. And then we send an enter stroke on the keyboard and it says rote to memory. So if we look here now, 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and that tallies up with 180 degrees there. If we send a C on the computer, and we get 180 by 90. Right, it's exactly the same routine for the, um, for the, as, uh, the elevation, should I say, except we send an O. Sorry, shift O. Oops, hang on, what am I doing? Oh. Oh, hang on. If I touch the mouse, I think I've come off the screen. We send an O2. And then we get elevate to zero degrees and then send keystroke. So. I haven't got a meter on, on the uh, the other side. In fact, actually, I can just quickly swap that over. Electrocuting myself. So I took the precaution of uh, putting a blob of glue all over the contacts there, so I'm not going to electrify myself anytime soon. If I can just quickly get in uh, there and onto here. I think we should be on the right side, or not? There we are now. And we've got about 3.3 .3 volts. As we move down to a second, we might have shorted out here somewhere. So I beg your pardon, we might have shorted out there. 
bit noisy. Could do a service there as we're coming down to zero. The zero mark is there. And then two lines line up. No mechanical switch on the elevation, by the way. So we're at zero here. Wrote to memory, and we just simply send an F2, enter, and then we get elevate 108 degrees of max elevation and send keystrokes. So we go up quickly. If I can just grab that and put that on there, I get a false reading. Don't ask me why that's not working. I should be getting something off of that. But let's have a look here for what's going on. Two point three. Okay, I think we've got it now. Two point one. Two point zero. One point nine. So on. Again, there's no mechanical switch on the elevation control, unfortunately, so you have to be very careful of that. We we'll just eye it. That looks about stopped to me. And then we just press enter on the computer keyboard. There we are, right to memory. So if we now look at this display, we've got 180 degrees here with 180 degrees, exactly where it should be. And we could, uh, Rotate, let's say, we let's go down and left at the same time. You should see these scales climb down. Now, if I stop the azimuth, keep the elevation going, there we are. And then reverse that, keep the elevation going, the azimuth going, shall we, and stop the azimuth. There we are, so there we are. And wait till we get to, uh, let's go back to the 90. No, actually, just quickly run it round to zero. Them both to 90 and 0. There we are. Oops, I think there's a bit of a feedback there from when I come off that switch a bit heavy, there was some sort of, uh, it didn't like that, so it scrambled the display, but that's not a problem. I can quickly reset that, it won't affect it too much, and I'll put some filter in to get rid of that at a later date. There's my old call sign. Built this when I was an intermediate license holder, so there we are. And there we are, we're at 90 degrees, basically. The tally's up there, 90 degrees on the elevation, and zero there. And in the next part of the video, I'll quickly talk through using this program with the um, Ham Radio Deluxe. Okay, so here we are. We are now tracking that row, that satellite. Sorry about the delay and all of that. Oh dear. Um, some hidden tab. Right, so this is a rotator now. Um, not much going on here really, other than the relays that will keep coming on as each satellite is tracked, you'll see the relays pop up to move it around a little. Hang on, maybe I'll be standing up for this really, so... See that? Um, I 
as you keep an eye on the rotator. And that typically, whoops, would be tracking the satellite as it moves. Very handy. Which tallies up with this, which should tally up with this. All easy peasy when you actually get it all set up and so on and so forth. So there we go, as you see the azimuth and elevation lights coming on when needed. That's the azimuth light and the elevation light is the fourth one along as elevation azimuth elevation azimuth <laughs> and then they're both together and then as you see when a satellite gets right over the top of you and the elevation goes too far generally you'll see that the antenna will swing all the way around and you'll get some really quite violent movements from this and this is where you want to be slowing down Look at our Arduino receiving data nicely. All is good, which all tallies up with this. So we're basically 45 and just a little off 90, which is true 45 and 74. So a little below 90. Can't really see there as, a, as an angle. So about getting on for about 73 degrees, 60 to 60 something degrees. These, these increments are about 15 degrees, so each one of them lines is about 15 degrees. So we're coming back down to about, that's about 60 there, which tallies up with 60 there, 45 degree elevation, so on and so forth. So everything is all seems to be working nicely. There we are, the K3NG antenna rotator, which I think is brilliant, it really is. And naturally, as the Rotation changes, that was the elevation taking a big hit. You'll notice that it will swing around, especially if the satellite's going directly over you. You'll see it will, um, do, it will try to bring the antenna around 180 degrees to track it going down again. So it'll go up on most rotators up to 90. And then instead of this one's a bit smarter, well, it'll go over to 180 and follow the satellite going overhead like this. Um, I can do my hand instead of it going over like this, it will get to 90 degrees and then come down again. So go up, turn around, and then come down again that way instead of it being like this from here. And if I can do my hand from here all the way to like that, it will simply go woo, hang on a second, like this up to here, rotate there, and come down like that. So, with this antenna rotator, was obviously doesn't stop at 90. It's got 480 degrees of cover. So there we are. Unfortunately, the next satellite is not in view for ages, so no time to play about with satellites. But as you can see, this is a this is quite a low Earth orbit satellite here. It just sort of gets that peak there about 50 degrees and tails off quite quickly. Never really gets the peak, but you'll see this satellite here. You know, the peak is quite big, it's never really overhead. You know, if, when it, if it gets up to 90, you know it's virtually overhead, so these satellites are not really um, 
I've just chose random satellites here. I haven't actually chosen a specific satellite, but let's have a look, see if there's anything else. Again, never really goes overhead. We've got another very low Earth orbit satellite. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. So none of these are 